Fait Good morning, welcome to worship. Glad you're here on this beautiful day. We have a special dedication or gift, so I'm going to have Ziggy come up, who's in charge of Christian Ed, and present that. Okay, Noah, you have to come up. Well, we are very excited to have Mr. Noah Ward, our most recent high school graduate. Um, When we moved here 15 years ago, he was a lot shorter. (laughs) So lots of years in Sunday school, lots of memories from Sunday school. So it's really an honor and a pleasure to have Noah here and uh, graduated on Thursday. Do you have anything you could add? Any plans yet specifically or just still enjoying being a graduate? <laughs> enjoying life, which is a good way to go. Well, we are so proud of you and uh, we're so happy to be able to present as we traditionally do. Here's your official card from the church and a Bible just for you. And we just uh, use it wisely And we just hope that the Bible, as well as your whole community, is full of blessings for you. So can I shake your hand? Congratulations. Woohoo! Yay! And I was told there is cake afterward to celebrate Noah's graduation. So please join us afterwards downstairs. We had a wonderful time this week. we had band practice, we had coffee fellowship, or and not, no, I'm sorry, and we had ladies luncheon and went to visit Bess Aldridge, is that how you say it? The museum, and she's an author here in Nebraska. So I think there were seven of us. It was a wonderful time. Um, so we hope to do more outings like that again. And then next week is... Um, Memorial Day weekend, so if you're here, I hope to see you um, in church if you're not going away, and we will have the choir sing. We were going to do the choir and the praise band last week, so the choir will be playing their piece next week, and don't forget about the annual garage sale, which is coming up, not next Saturday, but the following Saturday. June 4th. If you have not saved up anything and you see anything that is worthwhile to bring, so we will have three different places. We are donating the money all to charity from our garage shell as we normally do. Anything else about that, Eric? Eric's not in here yet. He was here. 
he's on the outreach team, so I thought he would mention something. Um, then Coffee Fellowship is June 1st. Today is Lindsay's birthday. We wish her a happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, your mommy's birthday. That's awesome. And Eric, did you want to say anything about the garage sale or anything else from outreach? Okay. Okay, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Sorry about that. Please stand for the call to worship. Jesus came from God to teach us, John 3, 2. We thank you, God, for the many teachings Jesus has given us. Our faith comes from hearing, Romans 10, 17. We have many lessons Jesus taught us throughout the New Testament. Allow us the grace to embed them in our very being and teach them to others. Amen. Let us sing. Now we will sing number 14, Come We That Love the Lord.
may be seated. And if the children will come up, come on up here. And if you would sit in this first pew, that would be great. I have a video to show you today. Hi, how are you? I love your glasses and your little bow. <laughs> So I really need you to either sit in that first view or turn around and sit down, okay? So you can see. to track someone looking for a quaint little studio. as much 
grass was planted. Jesus' friends asked him for the deep meaning of this story. And Jesus was happy they asked. So he said, sure. The farmer is God and the seeds are God's word. Sometimes people hear God's word, but they don't receive it. So the evil one comes and snatches it away. That's what's represented by the bird that comes and eats that seed. And the seeds that grow on rocky ground represent the people that hear God's word with lots of joy at first. But then when trouble comes, they fall away. The thorns represent the worries and troubles of this life, which can crowd out the word of God. And the good ground represents those people who hear God's word and understand it and live by it. Those people are very fruitful. Those are just the sort of people that would ask me what a parable means. Like, like us? us? Yes. And all the people that'll come after you who are wondering the same thing. Oh. <laughs> Now we will have a praise band song. I hope you won't hear me so much. We much we much.
joy of Noah graduating to all the people who are graduating um, or graduated uh, already because college is done school's almost out even the people that um, are moving up into middle school or I don't think we have any of those right Peyton's already in middle school Olivia's already in high school my daughter's in high school we have a couple people who are almost ready to graduate college, but are not right there yet. Um, Oscar is one, Haley's another. I don't know if Sam is anywhere near. Are you anywhere near? <laughs> not yet, that's okay. Anyone else know anybody that they want to mention is graduating? Or if you have another prayer request, go ahead. I know some people went to graduation parties. I just wanted to share that I finally have lost the bubble. <laughs> Yay! Praise so the Lord. I'm very happy the bubble and the green bracelet are gone. Yay! Oh, that's great news. This should have been during announcements, but this is, I guess, a joy, concern, and announcement. Um, as you know, we've got annual conference coming up, and the fact that it is in Omaha, Nebraska is just awesome. And I hope that all of you uh, take that opportunity and try to take in part of annual conference. Those of us who have gone several times as delegates know how much it's just it's just wonderful to be there. I enjoy, I think, every aspect of annual conference. A concern is that uh, we need still more workers. And um, let's see, it starts Saturday, July 9th for the pastors, right? Yes. Yeah. I think it's Saturday, July 9th and July 10. We need some more help with um, helping take care of the kids of the pastors while the pastors are having their conferences or their pre-conference conferences. So um, that would involve one session on Saturday evening and then two sessions on Sunday. And then annual conference starts that evening. So if you think you might It wouldn't be, be that many children, right? Yeah, it won't be very many kids. Uh, but if anybody would be able to help, just let me know, okay? Thank you. And I would, but I will be in that conference. I know Charlie and Steve are helping to unpack stuff beforehand. What day is that, Steve? Do you know? The 10th, okay. Um, so they need helpers. We have some people who have already volunteered to help with registration. So I'm so glad that we're able to participate. We will not, as uh, this has not been confirmed by the leadership team, but I don't believe, and uh, Holmesville is doing the same thing even. We went to a meeting there yesterday. We won't probably be having service that morning of July 10th because we want you to go to annual conference worship in the evening that's they usually do their opening worship in the morning unfortunately they're doing it in the evening so we want you to experience being in a room with hopefully like there normally is thousands of other church of the brethren attendees so please join us in omaha that day uh, also you can register for an online portion and do things online if you want to participate in the workshops or whatever but you can go to worship anytime you'll be getting some information about who is preaching 
during those worships. It's throughout the week. Um, and so we'll get that to you, I think, this week, right, Shelley? <laughs> we, we talked about it, hopefully with the newsletter. Does anybody have anything else to add? There was another tornado, as we know, um, Michigan, I believe, right? Just And in Germany, yes, I saw that, tornadoes, yes. So let us keep that in our prayer. Jesus, help us to thrive by taking care of where your word lands, tilling and tending the soil of our hearts and our minds. Allow your word to do the work of God that it can do if we're ready. Guide us into turning your daily to learn from your teachings, being ready to teach others so they too can become close to you. For that's what our purpose is as a community of faith, not about us, only for God's glory that we are here. Help us remember to be faithful. We must fo- to be faithful. We must focus on your mission you gave us to allow others to come into your presence and find rest in you, like you have so graciously allowed us to find. When we wander, when we focus on the wrong things, guide our hearts and minds to focus on Christ and what we learn about him from the word. Do your awesome work in us, Lord, so we too can teach others about what Christ can do for them. We ask for prayers for the people in Ukraine, for the people affected by the tornadoes and many other disasters, wildfires, floods. Lord, be with them, comfort them, and help the people that are helping. Bring peace, Lord, that only you can bring in us and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good news today comes from John 7, 14 to 18, and then Matthew 7, 24 to 29. About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning when he has never been taught? Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory. But the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing unjust in him. And from Matthew, everyone then who hears the excuse me, anyone then who hears the words of mine acts on the, and acts on them will be wise, like the man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house but it did not fall fall because it had been founded on a rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine does not act on them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these words, the crowds were astonished at his teachings. For he taught them as one who had authority and not as their scribe. Thank you, Eric. Jesus teaches, and so should we. Wow, I thought Jesus praying was a huge topic to cover, but I think Jesus teaching is even bigger wider. As Christians, we not only study and learn from all Jesus did and taught during his ministry, we try to live out the teachings in our lives. We take very seriously his words in the New Testament. In many Bibles, you will, of course, see them in red. We also try to teach others his teachings. 
We, of course, cannot cover all of Jesus' teachings today. That really is the work of a lifetime. So we will focus on a few to get to the question of what does it mean for us today? And I want to point out throughout this series, you will see mostly I will be using the present tense for the things Jesus did in the Bible. And that is because we serve a risen Lord who is still doing these things today. So it's not Jesus taught, but Jesus teaches. And last week it was, not, it was Jesus praised, not prayed. I didn't mention it last week, but there are scriptures that tell us Jesus is still praying, acting as our intercessor. <clears throat> and I say he still teaches us through the word, through each other, and through the Holy Spirit working in us. Anyhow, I chose, as you noticed, the parable of the sower for the kids' message. I won't delve too much into this, for the crux of it you know well, and it's one of the few parables that Jesus explains the meanings to, but just to his disciples. Interestingly, he says he speaks in parables so that outsiders will not understand. Well, that's weird, right? We often think that Jesus, in fact, spoke telling stories so that more people could learn from them, not less. I heard a wonderful sermon this week from John Curson that explains that this is because of free will. Jesus was such a great speaker. Over and over again, we see the phrase throughout Scripture that says everyone was amazed at Jesus' teaching. So per Pastor John, this was to let everyone have a choice regarding their faith their belief in the good news that Jesus proclaimed and taught. Another insight I want to share is this. Jesus speaks of the word of God as a seed. Even our faith is a mustard seed, right? Well, seeds take time, and they need caretaking. And the effects are part of an inward growth before it can even be seen. Too many people... He said, are looking for the effects of hearing the word to be like the effects we might see from rocks falling into the soil. Big ripple effects or dents in the ground surrounding it. But Jesus says it is the effect of God's work working in us. It's more like a seed sprouting forth slowly if there is good soil. And seeds need caretaking for growth to occur. So our job is to cultivate our soil, to make sure we stay rooted and ready for the word of God to work within us. Now first I want to turn to the second scripture Eric read, Matthew 7. We know Jesus was first found teaching in the synagogue when he was 12, and this is fairly early in his ministry, which he began around the age of 30. In Matthew 4, Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. John the Baptist is arrested. He calls his disciples, and then an unknown amount of time passed. It says in the last portion of Matthew 4 that Jesus went all around Galilee teaching in the synagogues the truth of God. It says word got out, and people came from Jerusalem, Judea, and even across the Jordan that he healed people, and more and more came to hear his teaching. Then in Matthew 5, it says he went up on a hillside and began to preach to huge crowds, which the Sermon on the Mount follows, covering Matthew 5 and 6, and ends here in this scripture passage. In the NRSV, it is titled, The Hearers and the Doers. Everyone who hears these words of mine, he says, and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. But those who hear these same words and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. When storms come, the house will fall. And here is that phrase I mentioned that we see over and over when Jesus finished saying these words. The crowds were astounded at his teaching. And it adds here, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. 
See, the scribes were like lawyers. They repeated the law, but they did not act like they had any real authority. They weren't judges, and they had no new information. They were not like Jesus, who was taking some things they already knew very well from the scriptures they had known and applying them in new ways, giving them new insights, new commandments. He was always offering something new, new life, one might say. So here is Jesus finishing up a very long sermon or message given to lots and lots of people. And he says, now don't just hear these words. You must act on them. That's important for us to remember and for us to teach others. Not that they should act upon our words, only the words we learn from the New Testament given to us from Jesus. I also want to note there is to believe to be a document written about Jesus before the Gospels were written. They call it Q, supposedly written around 30 AD, where some of the Gospel accounts actually believe to have come from. And a couple hundred years later in the early 3rd century, there's been a document found, or at least fragments of it, upon papyrus found in 1897 that they call the Sayings of Jesus by Dr. Greenfeld and Dr. Hunt. The Gospel of Thomas was found near these two papyri, as well as many other documents, government records, historical papers, census records. The sayings they have interpreted from Koine into English are on the handout I gave you, saying the sayings of Jesus. Many believe this document was created not just in tradition of writing-wise sayings from people, (coughs) but in case the Gospels were lost. I read through a 1913 document titled the Oxyrhynchus, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, collection. After the city that they found during an excavation, they used papyri. The author, Hugh Evelyn White, considers it early Christian literature rather than a theological document. (coughs) But it's interesting to see some parallels with scriptures that we know, which is your homework, if you'd like, to find the scriptures that relate to the saying, and I I really think there are, and I, I went through and looked at them, but I'll let you figure that out, and I'll send it off what I found afterwards. But I wanted to give you some time to think through this on your own. So I want you to find the scriptures that relate to the saying and maybe some new information that is gleaned, or what God is saying to you is they're said a little different, and there is a little bit new information that the document I went through was hundreds of pages long about this, but it was very interesting. Anyhow, I found this fascinating, so I wanted to offer this to you. Um, A note on the bottom there from the encyclopedia, and that's on the back of the Bible, It says in each of these sayings, the theme of the hiddenness, the true message of Jesus is found in the need for non-rational means of obtaining the true knowledge. And that sounds like a scripture also. So it's interesting that they're they're a little bit different, but they're a lot like it. Remember, this was in 300, about 270 years after Christ died that these were written. But it was interesting. Back to what Jesus said about his teachings. We will look at the first scripture Eric read from John 7. In the NRSV, this section is titled, Jesus at the Festival of Booths. Now to give you some context, the Festival of Booths is the last of three pilgrimages done by the Jews. They would travel to Jerusalem and build a temporary structure to live in for seven days. And it immediately followed Yom Kippur, or the Day of the Atonement, when Jews would try to change their fate through intense prayer and repentance. 
It was a day to turn a new leaf with God, so to speak. And the booth that was built for this was a sort of tabernacle. They also call it the Feast of Tabernacles. Remembering the time when the Jews wandered in the desert and would follow the tabernacle that held the covenant of the ark, where God was present as a cloud. It's a holy time of giving thanks to God for the harvest, and it's done in the fall. It's still a holy time in the Jewish faith. But so here is Jesus doing what Jews did, celebrating the festival of booths. You can see what they would look like back in biblical times, made out of palm branches, and what they would look like now, mostly with just poles, wooden poles, and cloth. If you've ever seen it, I've seen it done. I used to work for a private school, and they would do this in the backyard of the school. I'll start at verse 10 of John's. After his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were, in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, where is he? And there was considerable complaining about him in the crowds. While some were saying, he's a good man, and others were saying, no, he is declaring, or he's deceiving the crowd. Yet no one would speak openly about him for fear of the Jews. About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning when he's never been taught? Then Jesus answered him, My teaching is not mine, but those, the, the one who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing unjust in him. I wanted to begin at verse 10 as it gives context that Jesus was being talked about behind his back. It says that if some, some were saying he's a good man, some were saying he's deceiving, but no one wanted to speak up for they knew the religious Jews didn't like him. They were scared to be associated with Jesus, who no doubt was going against some of those in charge. It says in the middle of the festival, Jesus appears, and what does he do? He starts teaching. And it says people are astonished. They're thinking, this guy's the son of a carpenter. What's he doing teaching? He shouldn't be acting like he has authority. Who is he to teach others? We must remember how people were pigeonholed back in the first century, even worse than today. People from a trade background would never become rabbi or teachers. They were sure not supposed to be teaching others. That was the aristocrats' job. The Pharisees, the scribes, see... But Jesus didn't grow up in the elite world of a family who was destined to be a rabbi. He wasn't even a Levite or a priest. So how does Jesus answer this charge? He says, my teaching is not mine, but the one who sent me. I get this this shouldn't be all that too unfamiliar with from the Jews. I mean, look at Moses. He was abandoned as a baby. Look at David, he was a shepherd boy. He must have heard how God used the most unlikely people to do his will. And then he says, those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true. And there is nothing unjust in him. Now this is important. I remember my son telling me one time how I would complain that he didn't come to church enough and that I just wanted, he said, I, you, you just want me to hear you speak. I was like, no, it's not about me. It's about hearing the word of God. It is what transforms hearts if we let it soak in and be cultivated like the seed. If we have good soil, not eaten up by birds or things that entice us. 
I might say this could relate to one of those sayings of Jesus that sounds a lot like one of the Beatitudes. One who does not fast from the world surely will not find the kingdom. Not letting the word given to us be crowded out by thorns, like when we're too busy to be bothered with listening to the word, to be dried up. So it's not about me. It's not about any pastor. It's not about preaching, really. All we are trying to do is make the word of God seep into people's hearts. Make it relevant for you so it can grow. For Jesus is found in the word. Jesus is the word. We read that in the beginning of John. So I have one more song to share from you, which is done by the same um, band that from Thrive, from Casting Crowns, and it's called Only Jesus. And in this song, what I hope the world sees in me it, is it's not about me, it says, only Jesus. But first we will sing our final hymn, and then we will end the live stream after I give the benediction. We did not do that last week, and I'm surprised, but we didn't get tagged um, before we play this because it's copyright issues. So let us stand and sing our final hymn, Spirit of God Descend, number 502.
I am is the verse in there. Go now and teach about Jesus, for he is still teaching, and so should we, and he will help us thrive. If you could please be seated, and we'll play the video and stop the live stream. Thank you. If you could turn down the lights just a little bit. 